Alrighty, let's move on to Annie's question. So the next one is pretty long. I'm going to go have a smoke and a cup of coffee, and then I'll come back when Nikki's done reading this. <laughs> Annie says, hey, Rob, I am a 51-year-old woman, 27 years with Hashimoto's, and I was just diagnosed with reactive hypoglycemia. In a recent DEXA scan, it showed that I have a layer of visceral fat and a much higher general body fat percentage than I expected, which prompted my endo slash functional med doc to advise me to start taking metformin. I cried. I feel like I lost. The scan results explain why I can feel the solidity of my ab muscles, but still have a section in my lower belly that is distended from under my ab muscles and not the same quasi-flatness of my upper abs. This is all about abs. Uh, even though I eat low-carb keto and do uh, high-intensity interval training slash CrossFit slash lifting three to four hours a week, I cannot seem to get the fat from this area to reduce or disappear. Will these combined strategies of low-carb exercise and metform metformin shrink fat cells or make the fat go away, or am I doomed to this to be to be my new undesirable situation? It's not simply about vanity. It's actually more about how I feel in my body that is not the one I've known and had to work with throughout the majority of my life. I've always been a mesomorph athlete and usually around 20 to 22% body fat naturally, and now I measured at 32%. My question is, is it possible for that visceral belly fat to go away or get smaller through my current course of action, or is that only possible through outside tools and resources like cool sculpting? I realize this sounds pretty vain, but again, it's a big change for my body and I'm not loving it at all. Thanks, Rob. Man, so I almost took a pass on this one because it's a lot to unpack, but my wife actually goaded me a little bit and we, we chit-chatted on this, so a, a lot of these things, and this is is some of the challenge of the the Q and A format. It would be really cool in some ways if we actually had the person on the line, and we talked about potentially doing some live Q and A, which we might play with that in the future. But it, it's just another logistical challenge. But well, you, you know, we'll see. But the benefit here is that I could ask some of the following questions: What time do you go to bed? What time do you wake up? What is the sleep quality? Have you ever played around with a HRV platform to see what your heart rate variability is? Um, do you have any other signs and symptoms? Uh, given that uh, she said that her age was 51 or is 51, I'm thinking kind of potentially perimenopausal, menopausal you well, know, she also, issues. She, I didn't mention this part, but she said that she did have a three-year ordeal with adrenal fatigue and, and thyroid issues. So, um, right. So there's just a lot of moving parts on that. So I would really, uh, you know, I would like to see what's going on with sleep. I would like to know what the full hormonal profile looks like. Uh, estrogen, estradiol, testosterone, and, and playing off of what we just saw a moment ago, you know, free free versus bound and, and some stuff like that. And again, the heart rate variability so that we get kind of a sense of the full allostatic stress load. And something that Nikki mentioned here because she actually, uh, folks may not re remember or know this, but she really was kind of the point person running our gym, particularly when I got into book writing mode. Like she basically ad administered everything and has a pretty good deep bench of, of experience working with folks. And there was almost this kind of like spidey sense thing when Nikki well, when was reading this. You know, yeah. the, the high intensity interval training slash CrossFit slash lifting three to four days a week could mean a lot of things, you know, CrossFit in particular, like the programming could be really smart or the programming could also be a beat down. A beat down. And so, you know, to your point with the H, H, uh, HRV stuff, like we would get a better sense of, are you recovered enough to be training right. at this, at this pace? It might, it might benefit you to do a lot more recovery work. You know, uh, Chris Masterjohn had an outstanding, uh, podcast, and I, I believe he did a blog on this also, where he was talking about why he didn't try to lose weight specifically after uh, he, he kind of wrapped up his academic career and was transitioning into full-time online work. And he, he makes this very compelling case that he was just so maxed out on the stress level from just all of this other stuff that even though he wanted to lean out, even though he wanted to start lifting weights and do some different things like that, he was just kind of hanging on by a thread. And so he made the case that he had to get all of these other kind of allostatic loads, these other life stressors buttoned up first. And then as that started addressing itself, he noticed that he kind of started leaning out, even though he really wasn't addressing his food at all. He was eating, I, I think, like 
three meals a day and a snack. And when he was hungry, he ate and he wasn't really all that fastidious about the quality of the food. Like he did not want to introduce yet another stressor. And I think that there's some real wisdom there. I know that there are folks out in the interwebs that will just say, oh, it's calories in, calories out. You just have to drop the calories and you'll lean out. But these people I'm discovering end up breaking a lot of folks because I end up working with those people <laughs> as I'm working with one of them uh, right now who who uh, just was, was absolutely slaughtered by one of these uh, if it fits your macros people. And she had a host of different health problems that were getting worse and worse. And all that they did was ratchet down the calories and the fat. And she's an absolute disaster right now. And so, again, I'm not sure if I'm providing all that concrete of an answer, but I would definitely recommend uh, uh, putting some thought into more gentle activity, some yoga, some hiking, um, deep breathing, you know, uh, a little bit of, you know, kind of relaxed meditative type activity, um, even in your, your interval training and CrossFit type stuff. Like if you can tackle that more as kind of an aerobic pace where you can maintain a conversation during the process, that's just going to be way less of a stress. And I know that there's, a, you know, these, these classes are really valuable, even from a de-stressing standpoint because of the community and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, there's, there's really compelling reasons to do all this, but there, there's definitely something here, you know, um, it, I'm thinking hormones, I'm thinking potentially, again, maybe some latent uh, adrenal fatigue, uh, uh, thyroid kind of stuff lingering on. I beat myself up pretty good after that I Caveman show, and I had some thyroid issues, and it took me about two years to really get back on top of that. Doc Parsley helped me with that, and it, it started off with some uh, uh, nature throid and, you know, basically some thyroid replacement for a while, and now I, I you know, I've been off that for two, three years, so it, it does work, but I'm also really, really careful about the volume and the intensity of training that I do, and... Any other thoughts? So, like, as as a well, and if you want to maintain the community of of going to CrossFit, I don't know if there are classes that are uh, more low intensity or lifting specific, where it's not the competition, white buffalo in the sky, leave it all on the you know sweat angel on the mat kind of thing. Um, and I'm and again, we don't we don't know exactly what you're doing. We just have what what was written here, but um, those are some things that come to mind. Yeah. So think about sleep. Think about you know. I'm assuming that your endo slash uh, functional medicine doc uh, has maybe done a comprehensive both metabolic and and hormonal panel panel on you. If not, that's somewhere that I would look, you know, potentially there's some progesterone, estrogen, uh, you know, imbalance or, or some issues there, but it's definitely some, some low hanging fruit to look at. And there, there should be a way of getting in and uh, addressing this and kind of getting more of the body composition that you're looking for. But interestingly, you may sneak up on that in a more gentle fashion versus, uh, trying to thread a needle with a, a sledgehammer, which many folks do not saying you're doing it, but, uh, many folks do that. Is that an actual saying or is that another one that you've made up? I don't know. You always say these things that I've never, ever heard before. What was my one the other Threading day? A like, with like a sledgehammer. Like a porcupine in a whirlwind? Yeah, porcupine in a whirlwind. <laughs> I should start writing them down.